Welcome back to Echo Ridge in a colony that I've affectionately named Dumpster Fire. As a reminder, this is a part of December's Chaos Crew Play Along that started just this past Sunday. So if you're still interested in jumping in and playing this seed with me and hundreds of our closest Discord friends, check out the Discord link below and go look for the Chaos Crew Play Along channel. It's definitely not a competition, and everybody in the community is very helpful, kind, and there just to support each other. So highly recommend you check it out. I've started doing a little bit of additional exploration. We've managed to unveil just about the entire planetoid, but we have another couple of problems. One, we have another abyssalite break right here that we're going to have to put in an insulated tile. This one's not too severe, but just in case, we will make sure that we put an insulated tile there. We've also done some of the creative digging to be able to get down in here. I want to check out this entire side, and it looks like we found another gold volcano and whatever this is. I suppose it'd be too fortunate if we we're actually able to find two natural gas geysers, huh? We have the one here, which is great, because when we do tame the geyser and put a natural gas generator, we're going to be able to get some polluted water back in return. We're still quite a bit of ways from doing that, though. On the research front, I want to go ahead and get some normal bathrooms, the salad spinner, and possibly even the water sieve. Oh, we can't forget buffer tanks, can we? The issue with the water sieve is the fact that we only have 4,700 kilos worth of sand. Not a lot of sand on this planetoid, although there is some more filtration medium in the form of regolith over here. But because of the lack of sand or the ability to make more sand and the fact that we need to tap that water geyser over on this planetoid, I think we're going to send a duplicate over sometime this episode. Another few tiles of water over here. This is going to be great. We need to make sure that we get all of it. We're still waiting for some super duper hard digging, but we might be able to sort of work around it by going up and then around. So we'll have to put a couple of ladders here. No big deal. A bunch more mushroom food down here with this beautiful slime. Lots of gold amalgam. We're up to 10 tons of gold amalgam and almost 40 tons of cobalt ore. I also want to come all the way up here and find out what this vent or geyser is. So we're going to do something similar. I can sort of see the outline that it looks like a geyser, not a volcano, but we'll see. I'm also starting to build our plug slug prison. I mean, gentle captivity center. We're just going to put them all in here now. Eventually, we will ranch them and be able to get their full 1600 watts. But for now, we're just going to go there, grab them and put them in this safe place so they don't eat all of our metals. We'll, of course, put a nice wire there. But again, they're going to be hungry, so they won't produce as much wattage as a fully fed plug slug. One thing you got to give it to the metallic swampy asteroids. You don't have to worry about oxygen. It's cycle 22, and quite frankly, I just don't care about building any sort of oxygen machine. We have so much polluted water off casting right now, and I don't have a reliable ability to make sand to put into deodorizers. Otherwise, we could set up our sort of sublimation station deodorizer area and start creating clean oxygen, but right now it's just not worth it. We may have gotten really lucky here. I can't tell because, you know, colorblind and all that. But this looks like it is another natural gas geyser. And if that's the case, that's a big boon for us. I mean, the color looks similar, right? We're starting to get the long commute, which means the duplicates are spending more than 40% of their time moving from point A to point B. So after we finish up with the water sieve that we can't run without sand, we're going to go grab the fire pole. Ooh, I might have to do this sooner rather than later. There's a nice bog jelly in here, but it's down to 7%. So we're going to be a little sneaky by putting a door in here. And that way, when we do come into this room, the plug slugs are not going to be able to run around and get out. And then we can take our time and move them to this room. Am I being overly cautious with the plug slugs? Maybe. But I've had plug slugs running wild before, terrorizing the colony with their hydrogen gas. And quite frankly, this place is bad enough without adding in itchy eyes. We're also going to do the same in this room right here. Hopefully they build it quick. Nicely done. Gave up. Now it's your turn. Let's execute this build quickly. No. Okay. Things have gotten bad. There's a ton of cobalt ore right here. I'm going to try to quickly move it. We'll make that move a massive priority. 
And then I'm also going to move this plug slug who got out because gave up was not quick enough. And we're going to make these all a priority. Let's see if we can get in there. Or is that plug slug already chewing? Oh, I think the plug slug's already chewing. Oh, no. Here it comes. And there's the hydrogen. Absolutely wonderful. Apparently this plug slug had some nom noms too. Lots of hydrogen everywhere now. Thanks, buddy. With these plug slugs gone, I can now actually start exploring further up, dropping all of this water in the meantime. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Because this shaft only goes right down to the bottom, I'm putting all the excess polluted water here and we'll eventually pump it to our tank. Baby steps. Oh, look at all this delicious refined iron ready for us. How's the radiation there? Not too bad. I think we'll be fine to dig up to this point. Right now is the status of the plug slug power. You can see that the two cheeky plug slugs who managed to get some cobalt ore are producing 400 watts and the other two are down to 40 watts. Now the 400 watts will slowly go down to 40, but either way, it'll still be 160 watts loading into this jumbo battery. So I feel pretty decent about getting rid of the ration boxes and putting in refrigerators. What I'll end up doing is putting all the raw resources in the ration box where it's waiting to be cooked and then all the stuff we're saving for dupe consumption into the refrigerator. I'm thinking about taking this May. We don't necessarily need a builder, but maybe May can be our demolition specialist. I'm thinking about it though because they have a plus A construction plus they're handy. And their only negative is a small bladder. As far as dupes go, this one's not too bad. Other than that, right now I'm really starting to keep my eyes out for a nice operator that we can turn into a mechatronics engineer in the future. Welcome to the colony, dupe number six, the beastie. I'd hold your breath if I were you. And my color vision has failed me again. Not only is it not a natural gas geyser, it's a chlorine gas vent. Look, I've started coming around to seeing the usefulness of the chlorine gas vent. It's still not going to be my favorite. It's never going to be my favorite, but I'll see about doing something with it during this series. I got to be honest, I like big fire poles and I cannot lie. Look at this glorious run. It's going to go from the very top of the planetoid all the way down to the bottom. So convenient. On our climb up, we're going to do some strategic digging here. This should give us a lot of vision of this area over here. And then we're going to do the same thing, but over here and at least come knock on the door of the natural gas geyser. And that should give us the rest of the visibility down here. Somewhere on this planetoid, there's also an iron volcano and a hydrogen vent. That hydrogen vent's going to be great for more power as well. And with all these metal volcanoes, we'll have no problem feeding a few ranches filled with plug slugs. So I think power is pretty much settled. Not to mention, we are expecting gold and slimy meteor showers. Be honest, I prefer we didn't get the gold meteor showers because, well, we're already getting gold. And some of these metal meteors can hit pretty hard. So we're going to have to have a sophisticated planetary defense system. The slimy meteors might be great for long-term fried mushroom usage. I really wish it showed a sort of quantity so we could estimate how much we're going to be getting over the course of 10, 20, 50 cycles. With the addition of Beastie 2, we need to make sure that we plant a few more mushrooms. Remember our earlier estimate of 2.5 per duplicate? Well, now that we have six duplicates, we need at least 15 of the mushrooms. And remember that was lowballing the figure. So that's 10, and then this is 15. But we also have a lot of auto harvestable crops. We have puffs that die. We also have a bunch of fish that die that give us a little bit of extra calories. I can't believe how many Paku are actually sitting on this planetoid. It's rather humorous. Here's another five here. We're already sitting with a bunch in here. And the more water we drop, the Paku in those pools end up down here. We may not even have to ranch the Pakus to have a reliable source of food. Because you figure if you have 25 Paku, one's going to be dying every single cycle naturally, which is enough to feed 1.6 dupes. Not bad for not doing anything. Some more valuable sand right here. We're also taking this opportunity, sneaking under this wrecked satellite to go check out and find out what this glorious thing is right here. And oh my goodness, look at all this gold. We've had a couple of dupe skill points, 
And I wanted to give you something to think about here. With this third skill point, you can go into astronomy that gives you the telescope usage and mission control station usage. But if you're not ready to explore space and find out what else is out there, I would highly recommend getting applied sciences research first. One, it's the gateway to materials study terminal, so you can start getting all that beautiful radiation research, but it also gives you another plus two to science, whereas astronomy does not. We also have gave up getting super duper hard digging, really excited about it, because now there's nothing on this planetoid that we will not be able to dig up. I know one of the things I'm gonna see in the comments is why we haven't switched over the bathrooms yet. And the simple reason is the sand. Yeah, we have five tons right now, but that water sieve churns through some sand. We have a little bit of regolith here and some more sand here, but other than that, I don't see a lot around here. So I need to make sure I have sand as a renewable resource before I just start spending it all willy-nilly. So until that happens, the dupes can use the outhouse. Remember that time that I was really hoping to keep slime lung out of the colony? Look at the amount of slime lung on this entire planetoid. I've just let go, to be honest. There's no containing this at this point. I'm a little apprehensive about taking another duplicate. This is going to be duplicate number seven, but we can't pass on this Nicola. Operating and building. The only thing that would make them a better mechatronics and engineer is if they were operating, building, and supplying. But they also have Grease Monkey, and their only negative is they're unempathetic. Welcome to the colony, dupe number seven, Colonel Sanders. With Colonel Sanders being our resident mechatronics engineer, well, in probably about 100 cycles when they have enough skill points, we'll make sure they do all the operating and the building. And lately, with the mechatronics engineers, I've been putting the building on a higher priority. This way, when you're waiting on things like conveyor rails, they're not running around doing other operating tasks and rather are building the things you need mechatronics engineers to build. The guys are up here ended up being the hydrogen vent. Well, I can't highlight over it quite yet. This is the only vent I know that has a color even remotely like this. That means that this, I believe, is going to be the iron volcano. You remember from last episode, I was talking about why it was so important to have the ration boxes this far low. And another great reason is because when you do transition into your early refrigerators, all your foods in here are also going to be in a sterile atmosphere. That's why I keep all the things that don't go stale, such as swamp charred hearts, all the uncooked materials in this side, and then everything else is gonna go in the refrigerator. We're already up to 80,000 calories. Despite the fact that I only planted one more mushroom when Colonel Sanders came aboard. That goes to show you how much we're getting in seafood, random barbecue from the map, and some of our auto harvestable crops, like the bog buckets. I had a lot more dig commands down here, but I started seeing some suffocation messages. Because while the dupes are normally good about knowing how far they need to run before they have to run back to get air, when they have slime lung, all bets are off. So I'm being very careful what we dig out here. Eventually, we're going to open up this entire bottom area. It's going to be the entire dump for all this polluted water before we start pumping it up here. But we're taking it kind of slow just to make sure, you know, we don't send any dupes on vacation. Okay, some mistakes were made. All of our beautiful carbon dioxide had to go away because I spilled a lot of water. I mean a lot of water. I completely forgot that we had our carbon dioxide sink here and it's like, okay, well, I'll drop the rest of the polluted water. Yeah, at least it's still refrigerated. And after a little while, more carbon dioxide will get down there. Just a small detour. And since we don't have anything else to do, I've been going around and upgrading all the tiles so that I'm using granite. Especially when you're in and around the center of your base, you want to use granite because it gives you the plus 20% of decor. Whereas the sedimentary rock, while it being a tile and all tiles give plus five to the core, the granite means it's going to give 20% of that. So it's going to give you a total of six to core. Not a big difference, but it could add up. Another thing I've discovered, I'm sure it's this something I'm missing, but this is not counting as a great haul. You can see it's large enough. We have our decor item. We have our water cooler. I even re-enabled it just in case, which will now disable it. No, you can't drink any water. We're running a little bit low. It might be because the Buddy Bud is only a 15 decor value. 
Whereas the Great Hall wants a decor item of plus 20. Let's try a different plant. Well, that did the trick because the Jump and Joya is a 25 decor item. And now we have a Great Hall. Mental note, don't use the Buddy Buds. Cycle 34 pod, Bert and Lear were trying to get out. I was thinking about omelet and then I caught this beautiful two tons worth of water. We're not ever passing up water. Even though we have been digging towards these other pockets, and then putting pitcher pumps in them and slowly grabbing the water from here. We're also going to do the same thing over here and eventually with these small pockets here. We keep burning through our water supplies just from our research. We're not very far in our research either, so it goes to show you we're going to need a lot more water. That is where our salad spinners come into play. I'm going to take one, put it here and another and put it right here. Hook them up with some power. No big deal. And then add a couple of liquid vents, just like this. I never really put vents above the pitcher pump because if there is a dupe who happens to be using the pitcher pump and they get water on them, they're going to be sopping wet. Not that all of our duplicates care about those sort of niceties, but you know, it's a thought that counts. I suppose we're also using some water from our wash basins, but it really is only five kilos per use. You figure with seven duplicates, Per cycle, we're only using 35 kilos, which really doesn't bother me much. The reason why I was taking a look at that is because I kind of need to put a wash basin right here because all those duplicates are going to be handling polluted dirt. I don't want them to get the food poisoning. In fact, wouldn't it be better if I did the polluted mud salad spinning up here? Yes, yes, I think it would. I'm going to get to working on that, but for right now, I care more about clean water so we're gonna start going to get all this mud right now we have access to 43 tons and normally i would automate this process by putting a hydro sensor to make sure this doesn't get too full but let's be honest it's not gonna get too full i have this storage bin here i'm gonna set it on a four and mud i'm also gonna set the salad spinner aka the sludge press to a four as well because i don't want this to be everything a dupe does just when you know we have nothing else to do now using the sludge presses will require some eventual cooling because each sludge press is going to output 4,000 dtus per second not a big deal but when you start going through 10 20 40 tons worth of mud that's a lot of heat you can see how fast the sludge press climbs in temperature just from colonel sanders using it oh yeah it's up at 36 degrees already it will go back down as soon as we stop, but right now apparently we don't have many better things to do. I just realized I'm going to need to be careful. Because this room is so small, the plug slugs are cramped, which is going to reduce their reproduction rate by 100%. We don't want that. We actually want them to continuously lay babies. So I think I'm going to expand their room quite a bit. Just make sure they always have the power line that they can sleep on. And also make sure there's no other cobalt sitting in here. We're making our way over to the teleporter and we had this water to drop except this time I got a little smart and I put a hole here so the water will continue to drop through here and then all the way down without bothering our refrigerator or our ration box. There's also more sand, about four tons. That'll bring us to nine tons of sand and seven tons of regolith. So at this point, I really don't think I have a good excuse of why not to use bathrooms because I'm sure by the time we go through 13 tons of filtration medium, just with a bathroom water sieve, we should be okay. Ooh la la, Cycle 37 Pod has managed to give us a pair of pip eggs. We thought we were going to have to go next door to grab them, but looks like we're going to have a little bit of luck here. Well, if you can consider this dumpster fire luck. I wanted to show you what I'm doing with the bathrooms these days. Nothing is particularly odd here. I've got the pipes pre-planned for when we can get rid of the wash basins and the outhouses and replace them with the lavatories and the sinks. You know I like my two showers inside the bathroom. That way, whenever a dupe is sopping wet, they can come get showered and feel oh so nice. But then on the other side of the bathroom, on its own level, we have a liquid reservoir and the water sieve. All that water is going to come through the water sieve and get cleaned, go into this buffer tank. This buffer tank is going to give us a nice reserve of clean water just in case we ever need to extend the bathroom system. Maybe with a carbon skimmer somewhere down here. I thought about hooking the sludge press up to the water sieve, 
but I'm gonna hold off for now because again, we only have 13 tons of filtration medium. What we're also gonna do, utilizing this nice cold biome, is throw some composts in here. In fact, I'm gonna put them all the way over here. And that way, all the heat being generated by the compost is gonna be negated by this biome. We're gonna charge the whole system using a liquid pump in our polluted water reservoirs, just because I don't wanna waste our clean water. Then we just have to add some power to the situation. And that should be it. I'm also putting a couple of thimble reeds as our polluted water overflow into these hydroponic tiles. And what I like about what I did here is it's in a different room. And that way, the heat coming off of the water sieve won't eventually stifle the thimble reeds. Hopefully by then we have an entire colony cooling system that's going to keep this entire place regulated so it won't matter much. This is a bit much, so we can stop the flow from here. We'll deconstruct the liquid bridge. And now we're charged so we can get rid of the wonderful outhouses and the wash basins. I think I forgot to point out that the reason why I put all this set up on the level with the bathrooms is that way when they are dealing with the compost and all that polluted dirt, they only have one direction to run and it's past these sinks. Because eventually, we're not going to have any germs here. I know it doesn't seem like it right now, but trust me, we're going to get through it. I'm actually going to move the sludge press over a little bit because I want room for our storage bin that has all our filtration medium in it. Instead of doing that, why don't I take the opportunity to try out the wonderful new storage tile? Yeah, it'll be a long time till we get it, but I could put the storage tile right here and the auto zooper can grab from it. Absolutely brilliant. Who am I kidding? That's going to take a long time, so we might as well do this now. It'll save us a lot of dupe labor over the course of 400 cycles. Going around and doing my inspects, gathering up all these wonderful data banks. I don't know who hid all these floppy disks inside the electronic display but they've probably been vaporized by now but it's also time to send someone and i think in this case we're going to send our best digger and that's going to be gave up we know it's going to be decent over there but we're not quite sure with what else it's another smaller asteroid no big deal here comes gave up now don't worry buddy it's going to be fine i probably should have waited to the beginning of your shift but it's okay Oh dear goodness, look at all the polluted water over here. What am I going to do with it? There's a little bit of water here. Oh, and it's going to be cold, isn't it? Oh, that's not great. We just got to find the water geyser so we can start planting. Now in this case, we're not going to use a pitcher pump because there's so little water. We're just going to mop it all up and it'll sit in its little bottles. So when the wash basin needs it, we just go grab a couple bottles. No big deal. I guess we got to use rust on this planetoid to get oxygen because otherwise it's not going to happen. I don't see any algae and we only have... There it is. Hello, gorgeous. Unfortunately, it is minus 10 C polluted water, but it's something. But remember, if we don't get access to something that can give us sand, it doesn't matter. Because you can't put polluted water through an electrolyzer. And since Gave Up is on vacation, we will use this vacation cot for their living accommodations. Unfortunately, they didn't make it before it was nighttime. Maybe next time, buddy. And don't worry, it's just a little bit of urine. I'm sure it's not going to mix with our regular water. We also found another chlorine gas vent over here. As I'm sure you can guess, not really excited about it. I need to find a dash of salt vine because then we might be able to plant those salt vines and then break down the salt to make sand. I've tried to give gave up all the creature comforts at home. Unfortunately, there are no plants here yet. Not that many of them would survive in this chilly atmosphere. We do have a water cooler, but it's being disabled because we only have so much water and we need to save it for the wash basin. And then they have a wonderful cot. Gave up's doing great. Speaking of which, I need to check on the other dupes. And since gave up is sort of used to breathing that nice polluted oxygen, we're gonna let some of it roll down and then we're gonna mop it up to put it in little buckets. And those buckets will continuously off gas, providing us some nice oxygen. Oh, don't worry about the dupes over here. They're just taking their time and slowly wanting to suffocate. If you move faster, that won't happen, Naz. I don't think I should get another dupe right now. We're still kind of figuring things out with oxygen and we don't know how much water we're gonna get. But as the saying goes, you can't nay pay, and this pay is pretty good. Operating and supplying, so they're going to be a great mechatronics engineer. 
Plus they have Night Owl and their only negative is a small bladder. So congratulations to J-Ray, duplicate number eight. There must have been a slug egg somewhere because we have a plug slug here who's 10 cycles old. Who knows how much they've been eating. We're coming to grab them now and gonna deliver them into our new larger area. And we'll be able to see that the plug slugs go from glum to satisfied. Uh, we do need to move this cobalt over, please. Cave Up's done some more exploration, and down here, it's more of a dumpster fire. You can see we have a few abyssalite breaks, probably because of the supply teleporter output. But at least we know we found the input as well. No other vents or geysers that I can see. The bottom of the planetoid is down here. And so far, this is the only cool sus geyser. We did spot another geyser here we're going to go check out. There's also one here. Probably be easiest to go down from here. Actually, it'd be better just to go right up and over. Then grab a wonderful ladder. And we'll see what's up with this one as well. We have 6,500 calories here. It's not going to be a big deal. There is plenty of hexalent fruit. I mean, quite literally all over the place. Ooh, there's a murk leaf seed. We're getting some meteor showers over here on the second planetoid. Some of them pretty big. Looks like it's all oxalite. That's pretty nice. Not that we're going up there to get it anytime soon, but it's good to know. Gave up, found one hot polluted oxygen vent over here. Not very helpful until we get to the technology where we can cool 500 degree polluted oxygen and then perhaps clean it. But then again, that'll take more sand. We found the Biobot Builder. Ooh, a la. When we start getting some zombie spores and steel, we can make some biobots. I'm looking forward to playing around with this. I was really hoping for more water. Unfortunately, it is a liquid sulfur geyser, which does give us some opportunities with some other crops. But on the other side of the news, we did find a bunch of algae. So if we did need to resort to an oxygen diffuser, we could. I did block off this cool slush geyser. As soon as gave up is done exploring, we're going to send a field researcher over here and analyze it so we can see exactly how much water we're working with. Oh, look, it's a nosh sprout. Maybe we run pips into trees, into ethanol. Small update on our main colony. All the carbon dioxide that was keeping all of our dust caps going has somehow left and been replaced by nothing but polluted oxygen. Now, I'm not sure how it happened considering... There was plenty of carbon dioxide before. That's the reason why I build these little walls here, and that way the carbon dioxide has a place to sit and won't be able to fall further lower. Hey everyone, Editing Echo here, and I wanted to show you something really interesting about the scene you just watched. Notice this is one cut. It's definitely not split, and I didn't do anything in the game, but when we pass over just a second here, a lot of the polluted oxygen and the carbon dioxide just disappear. And I have no idea why or how. So if you've seen this in your game or you have any idea of what just happened, please let me know in the comments below. Because I personally have never seen anything like this outside of a debug mode or maybe even sandbox. But this could be what happened to all that carbon dioxide that was sitting in my dust caps. I look forward to reading your theories. Not a big deal, we did plant some more dust caps down here. I'm sure they'll be ready in time before we run out of calories. Ish. Another update is I moved the jumbo battery over here because it's nice and chilly over here. No reason to dump unnecessary heat. You can see that this generator has only been used about 29% of the time in the last five cycles. So I'm completely happy with our power situation right now. I've also set up my storage two automatic dispensers on sweep only and just about everything except for liquefiables and polluted dirt. The polluted dirt's coming down here to eventually be composted and eventually I'll store the ice somewhere in the vacuum of space. Other than that, we've fully explored this planetoid. Similarly speaking, we've almost done the same thing over here on Topio Rallin. Gave Up's done a great job. We still have a little bit more to do though. I know, buddy, you don't like the chlorine, but the sooner they're done with that, the sooner they can go home. Now, unfortunately, I haven't found any other vents and geysers. Not that I was looking forward to most of them. Oh, wait, here's one right here. I was just really hoping for another water geyser. 
think the quickest way will be the most direct route and we'll just go like that and put some ladders down i also broke into the space biome and that way next time there are meteors with oxalite coming down we can send the dupe to dig up the oxalite and bring it to a storage bin where it can actually do some good over here i'm not too worried about oxygen up here because there is a bunch of polluted water off gassing so it'll get tight for a little bit but remember, this is not going to be a permanent dupe's home. Looking here at the star map and seeing what vents and geysers are supposed to be on this planetoid, it seems like our new friend is going to be a carbon dioxide vent. How very anticlimactic. No luck down here in the bottom left corner. Although we do have another magma biome. Oh no. This tells me there's an abyssalite break somewhere. Why is all that igneous rock solidifying? It might be a break through here. To whatever planetoid is sitting over there otherwise i have no idea yep it was a carbon dioxide vent no fun at all for their efforts we're letting gave up dig up another hexalent fruit because well they're out of calories we're gonna leave this planetoid alone for a little while there's nothing we really want to do over here other than possibly grabbing some arbor acorn seeds but in order to activate them i'm gonna need a field researcher so we'll send one over to do that at the same time that we analyze this cool slush geyser. Otherwise, I think Gave Up can head home. Just be careful when the teleporter is underwater. You don't want them to suffocate. We're slowly turning through the rest of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 research. We're also getting a lot more water by using the salad spinner. But now that we've checked out both planetoids, we can start building a plan. For me, the first one's going to be figuring out how to get a renewable source of sand. Because without sand... I'm not going to be able to sieve this cool sus geyser or even our bathroom loop for much longer. Yeah, we can set up some sort of system where we boil all the polluted water, and that might be a possibility. And right now, it's the one I'm leaning towards. I hope you had a great time in this episode. I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say in the comments below. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.